What do you think of when I say crop tree release? White-tailed deer. White-tailed deer. I think if most people are honest with themselves, that's what, honestly, that's what I think of. <laughs> to be honest, you think of releasing white oaks for more acorns for white-tailed deer. Mm -hmm. Certainly part of it. I do that myself. Yep. And in this video, we're actually going to take a unique spin on crop tree release. We're going to release some oaks trees, but we're going to explain different benefits that can be a result of releasing oak trees. Definitely some outside the box thinking yeah. coming this show. Yeah, so. we're going to talk about how crop tree release can benefit rough grouse, mm -hmm. pollinator species, mm -hmm. butterflies, moths, caterpillars of all things, and bats. And bats. Hmm. Let's get to work. What if I told you that it's the middle of March? Got it. We have a chainsaw and we're doing timber stand improvement. Got it. Crop tree release with this white oak. Mm. And in the process, those three things are going to create pollinator habitat. Isn't that so weird to think about that? Doesn't sound like it quite makes sense, but that's no. exactly what we're doing. This little white oak right here is never going to produce acorns in my lifetime. No. I think when we think crop tree release, most people think of daylighting your mass producing trees, which that's exactly what it is. Yeah. But you can daylight younger trees and still add value in the process. Mm -hmm. And this white oak is getting choked out, shaded out by all these poplars behind us. And we're going to cut these poplars down and in the process, this white oak is going to respond positively to all the sun. It's going to branch out and those branches are going to attract caterpillars. You can't have butterflies if you don't have caterpillars. No. And then what preys and fuels caterpillars as a food source, your songbirds are also going to benefit from us yeah. releasing this white oak. Yeah, these white oaks, or oaks period, they're just the number one uh, tree species we have in North America, I believe, that contains so much life, the life cycle, the whole ecosystem from underneath our feet to the very branches that these caterpillars are utilizing. Yeah. And it's just, it's so weird to think we're going to be affecting pollinating species, air quote, through timber stand improvement oak trees. Right. <laughs> it's just, yeah. It's really cool. White oaks, they're a host plant of mm. several hundred oh, insects and, big and wildlife species. Yeah. And in opening this little guy up by cutting these poplars behind us, we're going to add value to all those species. And many years down the road, when this thing does produce acorns, deer, yeah. turkeys, grouse, yep. those game species will benefit yeah. from it as well. Mm -hmm. So you're cutting. So good yeah. luck. <laughs> yes. Let's do her. There is no. <laughs> Let there be light. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, it's just amazing. Only a couple trees, but yeah. just a couple trees. We're not talking about deforestation here. Yeah. All the way around an oak tree. You want some competition. We left one tree there. Yeah. That's about the same comparative size. That way, it grows straight. Yeah. There's a little bit of competition, etc. But man, just cutting a handful of trees. What we did. It's never about the now, it's always about the future. Especially on a Hopefully. tree like this, it's, it's yeah. all about the future on yep. a tree like this. Yeah. Had we not cut these trees, I mean, there's poplars growing up around it, red buds, this thing probably yeah. would die in the next 50 years from lack of sun had we not opened it. Oh yeah, them. absolutely. Yeah, I mean, these trees are pretty resilient, but think about it. It's gonna serve a purpose here in the next, you know, handful of years, 15, 10 years, excuse me, it's gonna start being attracted to the non-game community, caterpillars, all the stuff. It's going to produce oak leaf litter mm -hmm. and all the, the, the benefits of that underneath our feet, yeah. the whole ecosystem. And then eventually it will be producing mass and wildlife will always, obviously benefit from that. Yeah. It's a whole life cycle. It's pretty oh, neat. Yeah. Especially on a tree like this size, I think it's cool because our oak regen is declining across yes. a lot of the country and, and it seems yeah. insignificant to help a tree that's 
15 yeah. feet tall that we're not going to see benefits from yeah. for, in our lifetime. Yeah. But giving this tree a chance to, to grow is important across the yeah. ecosystem because oaks are declining. That's amazing. Work. I wish I could take credit for all your, all your work there. but It was going really good until the end, but we won't show <laughs> that part. <Yeah. laughs> the thing about wildlife management is that there's so many things that you can do. Yeah. Even with one tool, and our tool today is timber stand improvement. And when you go out there, all oh, you think deer and all this other stuff. Right. But at the same time, you can pull different labels off of this and off of that. And today, this project here, what we're doing is for rough grouse, temper stand improvement for rough grouse. Crop tree release for rough grouse. Yes. Which is really cool because this is a red oak <clears throat> right beside us. And I think when people are doing crop tree release, they, they favor their white oaks yeah. here because you want more acorns yep. for bow hunting, which yep. I, I do that. But we're on a part of our property where high elevation, 2100 feet, high stem count. We're in yeah. a pocket of the property where we have a lot of grouse. This red oak is going to be a winter food source for grouse, mm -hmm. not necessarily highly favored by deer yeah. early season. As you get into winter, it is yeah. for deer, but grouse don't care so much about the higher tannin count, uh, content yep. on a red oak acorn. So we're going to open this up. There's a couple poplars and red buds. We're just going to give this red oak a little bit more crown, but we don't want to cut everything around it because why there are grouse up here is because we're of the We're doing it for grouse management. Right, yes. this is grouse management. There's a there's high stem count, high stem density. We don't want to remove all the vertical no. cover. We uh -uh. just want to help this red oak in the immediate vicinity around the crown so it can increase its acorn production while maintaining the cover yeah. for the grouse. Let's get after it. It's amazing how little you can do with such a big benefit. Yeah. Cutting three poplar trees. Yeah. Let so much sunlight, it's gonna hit the forest floor, it's gonna help out this red oak. Yeah. And we kept the integrity of the site. Right, and that's being intentional, especially when you're running a chainsaw. You see so many people just running it, whacking yeah. and stacking. We cut three trees, we had a plan in mind. We're keeping in mind the species, the, the tree species we're managing yep. for, red oak, lasting food source into the mm -hmm. winter and the species for which we're managing. Yeah. Rough grouse, we want that winter food source in an area on the property, high stem count where grouse live. We're trying to offer them something of value in the winter months, that yeah. winter time food source. Like you said, three trees, big hole in the canopy, took 10 minutes of work and the benefits are endless. I'm getting tired. <laughs> I had the easy cut, you did the hard work. When doing wildlife management, there's a lot of decision making. And when you're doing timber stand improvement, there's, that falls into that. Yeah. Now we're doing pollinators, we're doing releasing, for doing grouse management of all yeah. things. Why not when you do timber stand improvement? In this situation, we're gonna make a decision based on not white-tailed deer, not turkey, just wildlife in general. Yeah, you kind of evaluate the site before you start running mm -hmm. saw and cutting trees. Yeah. We have a middle-aged white oak beside us, yeah. which we're going to release. Mm -hmm. We got a big shag bark hickory behind it, which is actually out competing it a little bit. Yeah. And your first inclination may be to cut or kill this yep. tree, but shag bark's limited across the landscape yeah. on our property. Bats nest up underneath the shingle. There's a wildlife aspect. Exactly. Of it. This white oak, we got a grapevine growing up it. Mm -hmm. Wild grape, especially for rough grouse, yeah. is an important food source. You may think you want to leave it, but in this case, we want to encourage yeah. the white oak and make it as strong and healthy yeah. as possible. So we'll cut the grapevine. And then down below the hill, there's a big poplar that is out competing yep. the white oak on the southern side of it. So it, it is shading it out throughout the, as you know, keep in mind orientation as the sun's right. moving, it's going to shade out this white oak. So we will cut that poplar. Yep. So it's just evaluating yeah. the site, your goals in mind and making decisions accordingly. Yeah.
You said it when we were up there cutting. Cutting trees is a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. It puts a smile on your face. It's my favorite management project, running chainsaw, yeah. doing TSI this time of year. Yeah, and to hear that cutting trees is fun, not you can't look at it as the way it comes out. Yeah. When you're doing good for wildlife, and you know when you do cut a tree down, it is benefiting wildlife and the health of the trees around it. Right. My gosh. Yeah. That is fun. <laughs> it is. And that's hopefully what we communicated in this video with crop tree releases is being intentional hmm. in the decisions you're making, yep. the trees you're cutting, the species of tree you're cutting and the species you're managing for. You know, I, I, you see, we say it's, it's fun to cut trees, which it is, but we're not running around just whacking no. and stacking trees just for the sake of just for the yeah. sake of doing it. We're being intentional. We have a game plan in mind and executing that game plan and it's benefiting like we talked about critters and animals underneath our feet. Yep. Pollinator species which you wouldn't think of when you're thinking crop tree release or timber stand improvement. Mm -hmm. And then of course game species like deer, turkeys and rough grouse. Just think of that when you're out there. Not to repeat what you said, just know underneath your feet all the way to the tip of the top of that tree. Yeah. There's some benefit from it. It's it, amazing. It should make you feel good. It does. One cutting, opening up one oak tree, whether we, we cut some bit, we opened up some big ones and we opened up some, some little, little ones. For and the every, future. Right. Every decision we made is going to benefit all those wildlife species we talked about. But just like it is for us, I'm sure it is for you, wildlife. It's our way of life.